All right, thank you. Hi, I hope everybody got their books signed. Stay hydrated. So my name is Jasper. I'm from SVA, a German system integrator. We do a lot with uh, Red Hat Technologies, OpenShift. We have an IBM Fusion. And that's some of the topics that I'm most involved in is OpenShift, uh, including virtualization, uh, the IBM Fusion. But also, I was um, researching WebAssembly and its use cases in OpenShift uh, for the past one and a half years around. I did extensive testing um, on performance, on security. And today, I wanted to share some of the results that I have. Um, and that's basically the, the, the way to the future of software development that we are seeing now. So I'm asking, what would you expect from a container? What is the conception we have about containers? So I looked up the, the start page of the Docker documentation, where it reads something like, um, a, a container is portable. It runs on any operating system. And uh, a container is secure because it's isolated from other workload on the machine. And that is what we think of containers. So we, we assume they are self-contained, hence the, the term container. We believe it's portable. And yes, it's, it's quite portable among the same operating system and CPU architecture. And oftentimes for us, that's Linux on x86 64-bit processors. But then, I switched to ARM64 with the M2 MacBook, like, uh, what was it, one and a half years ago, and suddenly my containers wouldn't start. My images, I had an image for LaTeX, a document processing, uh, one, 1 1.5 gigabyte image. I had to recompile it, uh, took, took some time. So it's all possible to work with ARM. Maybe we have uh, Raspberry Pis uh, in the home lab, and we see, okay, uh, some images don't pool, some images don't run because the maintainers didn't provide the ARM64 binaries or on container images for this architecture. And then also there's uh, Windows containers, a completely different story, but there we see those are the boundaries of portability with containers. It's still binaries that run against an operating system in a specific architecture. And when I wanted to transform my own um, Pandor Colatech document processing Docker image to ARM64, I wanted to keep it in GitHub Actions because I had it running for x86 Linux in GitHub Actions. It's free. You can just uh, drop the workflow file, and then it's compiling and publishing your container images. But as far as I know, they don't have ARM64 runners available. So what can I do? I can probably put a Raspberry Pi at home and let it compile. But I don't want to do that, to be honest. So this is the portability limitation of containers. And also, we have um, this isolation and uh, security and safety um, expectation about containers. And there's a lot of, um, uh, of, of facts and aspects about container security. There's a lot of enterprises and companies around container security. Uh, just consider um, Red Hat Advanced Cluster security. So there's a lot to do to keep this isolation running. My understanding is that um, containers are a feature that came late to the Linux kernel. And therefore, um, I would say the Linux kernel wasn't designed for that, for Linux con for containers and for container security. But um, people like uh, Dan Walsh, for example, who is here, I just saw him, uh, did a lot of work uh, with SE Linux, uh, with container namespacing, and, and et cetera. So we are quite developed in that regard. Well, and self-contained, the, the great thing about a container is it packs everything and you can run it everywhere. This is what we expect from a container. And um, back to the story with the Docker documentation, I handed in a pull request um, where, where I changed this part where it says it runs on any container, any operating system, because I say, no, a container image only runs on that specific configuration. Um, it was too complicated, so <laughs> I should push it a little more in the future, maybe. So um, let's talk about WebAssembly. Um, as a, a counter example, with WebAssembly, you have this, um, this basically a virtual processor specification. Um, so you have a processor with certain instructions. You have um, your RAM, basically uh, a, a page that you can write to, and that's it. It's just a c virtual computer, like a VM, that you can, you can program to do things. Now, what would you do? You can develop in, well, today, basically, every relevant programming language, but ideally you choose something like C++, Rust, or Go, because they have very good compiler support, also TypeScript. And when you compile, you basically cross-compile not 
to x86, but to WebAssembly. It's just like x86, it's a compilation target. And then you end up with this WASM code. It's like bytecode. So it's very similar to, to the Java JVM uh, in, in its usability. So you can run this code that you see here on, on any kind of computer, any operating system, any processor, maybe even on the IBM System Z mainframe, on the Raspberry Pi, um, as long as you have a runtime. So this is where it gets familiar with Java, but it's much more, um, it's much, much smaller on point and very modern. So web is neither web nor assembly, it's what people are saying. Um, it's, it's just this um, very modern bytecode definition. So the primary use case was to run application in the web. So uh, because JavaScript wasn't fast enough to do certain things, you cannot do uh, very good um, uh, 3D um, graphics, uh, video games, uh, cryptography in JavaScript in the browser. So this is why they invented WebAssembly a few years ago. Um, the browser manuf browser uh, developers like um, uh, Google with Chrome, Mozilla, etc. But now you have also WebAssembly runtimes that run outside of the browser. Um, on, on servers, for example. For example, Wasm Edge. And then you even have the, the interface to the system, WASI, uh, on the right in this picture, where you can access system resources. So imagine the, the POSIX specification that we use from Linux software to access system resources like files. Um, they, they do similar things with WASI, but uh, only with the requirements that we have today. Uh, so POSIX has a lot of complexity that we can just drop and we have a very modern uh, definition and standard to use. So the advantages we see with WebAssembly, especially in the, in the space of containers and Kubernetes, is the compatibility. So you, you can compile from, very, from, from a great lot of programming languages towards WebAssembly, but as I said, um, you, your best bet is to use C++, Go and Rust. Um, everybody had an experiment with, uh, can we compile PHP or Java to WebAssembly, and that often turns out to work, but it's not ideal often then. Um, regarding security, so you have another sandbox. It's basically a VM you're running, a very lightweight VM. So, so you're not sharing the, the kernel like a container does, but you have everything sandboxed. And this is another layer of protection that you will have um, t additionally to the container isolation that you already have and that we developed. And then, as I said, it's portable across, across any kind of computer where you can have this kind of WebAssembly runtime and you will end up with incredibly small binaries. I did some testing. If you do the regular from Ubuntu and then add, uh, you add your source code and you compile it, you will end up with large images. That is what many of us are doing. It's, it's not uh, unusual to have a 100 megabyte image that basically does hello world. So if you do that with WebAssembly, you will most often end up with something in the range of a few kilobytes, few megabytes. And then finally speed. This is not really an advantage because it is most often um, slower than native uh, execution, which makes sense. It's, um, it, it's something that runs on every kind of computer. It's not optimized with the compilation for this kind of computer. So how can it be faster than native code on that platform? Most often it's around six to more percent slower than native execution. But I also had a test with a Fibonacci a number generator that was faster in WebAssembly on my MacBook than an ARM64 binary that run on the same MacBook. So it can be faster than native code in special cases. So how does it work in OpenShift? What's the status of that? So first let's consider how we could use WebAssembly in Podman. And in fact, it's already present in Podman Desktop. If you use Podman Desktop, you will have a Podman machine maybe that already has WASM support. Um, there's a layer, we just saw the video about OCI uh, and Cryo. So from the writer developers, there's the C run container runtime, which is OCI compliant. And this can normally spin up your containers. It will set up the container with the namespaces and then start into a Linux binary, into the native application. But also this, this software, CRUN, it also supports to work with specific WebAssembly runtimes like uh, WASM Edge or WASM Time. It, it will set up a container from a container image, but in the container image you will have a WASM file that will, as I said, run on every kind of computer. It, it will create a container, so your WebAssembly runtime is, name, is namespaced, it's isolated from the rest of the computer, and then in that, in that container start a WebAssembly runtime with the image that is contained, with the WebAssembly program that is contained in your image. 
And the same thing works in OpenShift. Um, it's not part of the product yet, so I, I modified OpenShift. You just have to use the C run, uh, uh, container runtime and compile it with WebAssembly support and then uh, have a WASM edge or WASM time on your OpenShift nodes. You can do that with custom OS image, for example. Um, I did the same thing and then you can really create a port in OpenShift, reference an image on Docker Hub maybe containing a WASM file and it will, it will execute that. And I could I could use the same WASM images on, for example, Docker Hub, on the on an OpenShift on a mainframe with uh, MicroShift uh, on on Raspberry Pis, whatever. Um, it, it's extremely portable then. So um, the idea here is really to have a containers, Docker for example, or um, the Red Hat container stack interchangeable with WebAssembly have WebAssembly software that is portable and, and isolated and secure, have it interchangeable in ports, and then ultimately run applications. So ideal use cases for that would be function as a service, um, because these kind of programs are uh, easy to distribute, they are secure. Even Cloudflare is allowing you to, to bring WebAssembly software that they will run as part of their routing infrastructure. So you can modify requests to your website on, the, on Cloudflare. So the questions that will arise is um, if the sandboxing of WASM is improving compared to just using containers with native binaries and if it's fast enough. It, because it, it's, it's not a big advantage to use WebAssembly if everything is 10 times slower, right? And then we also want to do the very same things with containers and with WebAssembly. Because also if we have a f limited feature set with WebAssembly, it wouldn't make sense to do more with WebAssembly. And I did a lot, a lot of testing on that. So just a brief, um, a brief conclusion on security with WebAssembly in the Kubernetes context. So you will have another layer of isolation. You will have the container that in OpenShift already has a strong security, strong security default, and you will have the WebAssembly runtime of, on top of that. So a lot of the, the kernel uh, exploits that were found in the previous years, like Dirty Cow, for example, wouldn't be possible just like that, because you, you, you don't have the, this direct access to the kernel. Also, you have um, a, another layer of abstraction across your, uh, on top of your system resources through WebAssembly, through, uh, through WASI. So you don't directly access POSIX, but you have this WASI interface, which can also be vulnerable. So y this abstraction is also, it can be made secure, but also if there's an implementation fault and it's very fresh software that maybe has these vulnerabilities, you would attack that first. But yeah, as I said, um, Linux vulnerabilities for containers, they most often don't apply. But we had Spectre a few years ago, so there's always hardware vulnerabilities. Um, Spectre was about speculative execution. It's in theory possible and has been proven already to, to work in specific cases with WebAssembly. So there's no, it's, it's not um, the, the ultimate silver bullet to, to handle that. I also did extensive performance testing. And what is quite interesting, that if you have um, a libc compilation of a, I, I did a Rust a number cruncher, a few different algorithms. This was a Merkle tree uh, calculator. You will see that um, most often the most, the fastest execution you will find with uh, native binaries with libc. But if you compile with um, the Mosul C library, which is used in Alpine, uh, for example, then you will have much uh, slower execution. So I found that um, the startup time can can be optimized with WebAssembly, but in, in, in the way that I tested it, it was not faster. And I even had this one example where, it, where the, the WebAssembly execution was faster than native code on my MacBook, which is uh, quite impressive, I think. So what is the development here? We saw WebAssembly being standardized in 2017, and two years later in 2019 they standardized the system interface, which with WASI, you can you don't just have the number cruncher WebAssembly, which can just do uh, process um, process CPU instructions and work with a bit of memory, but also you can access system resources, you can do networking, uh, you can even in an abstract way attach message queues, for example, like um, like uh, Kafka. And then, even two years later in 2021, we saw support of WebAssembly runtimes in CRUN, in the container runtime that is used in OpenShift. So th that is really what allows us to, to create 
or to run WebAssembly workload like containers in Portman and later in OpenShift. And it's part of Portman Desktop since 2023. And then, eventually, I think this feature will come to OpenShift. Um, signs are very good. So this is why I'm, I'm telling you all of this. At the moment, um, if you want to use that, you will have to go the, the way that the path that I went. So you probably have to create your own custom operating system image for OpenShift, deploy it across your workers, and then, then it can natively execute WebAssembly. And it's great to already use that technology at this moment, even though it's not um, it production ready in OpenShift as part of the support. Right? It's, it's, you have to do this extra step at the moment, but I think the future is bright for WebAssembly. So, thank you very much. Is, are there any questions, if there's more time? No?